You are listening to the continuation of the story. You can listen to the previous part via the link in the description below this video. Happy listening. Rob felt much better after Julie's visit. He wandered around his apartment for a long time, thinking about everything she told him. It was wonderful to know that someone could bring him such comfort, a dynamic that had been completely absent from his life since his wife attacked him with a culinary pseudo-argument. Rob plopped back down on the couch, feeling calm and gradually filling his troubled mind. Now he could dream about his wife again. Mika no longer brought him pain. Perhaps now he could just fall into sleep. The door to his apartment swung open with a bang, hitting the wall like lightning. Rob jumped up from the couch, instantly being in the air before his feet touched the ground again. The sudden avalanche of sounds did nothing to calm him down. It seemed as if the Valkyrie had burst into the apartment in a whirlwind of noise. Rob froze, waiting for the second clap of thunder. The woman bombarded him with words as if from a machine gun. Honey, I'm sorry, I didn't cheat on you. I wanted you to think that I did, but only for a moment, so that you could see what it's like without me. But I know that you would probably have already found yourself some hot blonde, or maybe a redhead if you kicked me out and perhaps you wouldn't think about me for a long time, but one day you would start to miss my love. If only this one. The new woman of easy visibility would not turn out to be not a woman of easy virtue, but really loved you, which means that she is probably not a woman of easy virtue, but simply too persistent in her love. Although if she hunts for husbands, she will not have many friends, but why does she need someone else if she already has my husband? I don't have many friends, but I don't need them, because I have you and my sister. She's cool, right? I'm scared, Rob, maybe. You would have started to miss me, but I saw what it was like without you, and I became scared. Then I had a plan to avoid this, but instead it all happened, and I lived without you, even being at home with you. It was terrible and getting worse, so I told my sister everything. Do you mind? Is she still here? Rob realized that he was clutching the side pillow from the sofa that he had grabbed when he jumped up from the noise. His eyes were full of horror, and his breathing was rapid and heavy. His head was buzzing, trying to process and make sense of the stream of words he was suddenly plunged into. He decided that Mika's scream was the second clap of thunder he had been waiting for. Why did she suddenly become silent? Maybe she lost consciousness from lack of air. Rob processed the sentences he heard with a delay of about a minute. Who was she asking about? She probably meant her sister. Did Julie change her mind and tell Micah she was here? Half shocked and half dumbfounded, Rob muttered in response to Mika's question, Who? Who's there? Mika replied with concern, That hot redhead with huge breasts who moved here. Honey, I always thought you liked shape over size. Don't make that mistake. Rob wasn't sure where the answer came from. He was emotionally ready to hide under the table. Mika, nobody moved here. You only left for a few hours. He remembered Julie's words about Mick. She's pissed. Mika took a deep breath, her shoulders slumping in relief. See, can I hug you? Rob realized he was standing on the couch. Embarrassedly, he went down to the floor hiding his awkwardness by handing Mika a pillow and spreading his arms to the sides. He asked, Can I just be quiet, please? Bang! The air was knocked out of his lungs. She knocked him down, and they both ended up back on the couch. How could she move so fast? He noticed that the door to the apartment was still open. No problem, he thought. Yeah, the door swung open. Oh, how motivated she was. Rob tried to move Micah a little so he could breathe. It was more than an ordinary hug. It was a hug that seemed to be glued tightly, and not with ordinary glue, but with real glue made from seashells. Honey, let me make you a drink, suggested Rob, hoping it would help calm Micah's clearly frayed nerves. Oh, okay, Mika replied, lifting her face, which was buried in his chest. After an awkward pause, she added, but I'm not going to let you go. The tone of her statement seemed to suggest a question, but the strength of her bare hug made it a statement. Rob decided that the best thing to do was accept her hug as a given and begin to try to somehow synchronize their movements to get to his feet. 
Mika's head was pressed against his chest like a sternum, and her arms were wrapped around his lower torso like a poorly placed belt. It was an engineering feat to get off the couch, and then they had to shuffle towards the kitchen where there was alcohol. As they moved, Rob suddenly imagined what it would be like to be Siamese twins. As Rob poured the drink, Mika noticed that the door to the apartment was still open. This caused her to have an instant panic attack. Before her was an open path for her husband's escape. It was terrible. Still clutching Rob's chest tightly, Mika tried to turn him around so that he couldn't see the open door. He tried to turn towards her, and she made an effort to keep his eyes from meeting the doorway. Mika was convinced that if Rob saw the door open, he would immediately start running. Another terrible thought was born in her head. Are the windows open? He might try to get out through them. We're only on the twelfth floor. Her gaze returned to the door. It was still open. Why wouldn't this damn door close? Her husband could almost see her. Her eyes widened in horror. She glanced at the door, then looked back at Rob. He was already looking at her. Rob looked past her and laughed. Miraculously, he guessed what she was thinking about. Mika, I want to stay here with you. Your Lucille Ball impersonation is too good to leave. She loosened her grip a little, replacing it with a more comfortable hug. Smiling nervously, she said, Damn it, I knew you loved redheads. This was the first more or less normal statement in the last few days. Rob laughed heartily, but most importantly for Micah, he made no attempt to loosen the hug. Rob said, We still need to talk. We haven't fixed everything yet. I'm still angry and disappointed. I have a lot of questions for you, Micah, and you have your own problems to work on. You and I have a big list of things to fix, but I want to fix it. Rob paused, his expression drawing her attention to their embrace, and then added, I actually didn't want you that close to me. With every word he said, Mika's eyes grew bigger. He continued, But your apology, your scared state, and how desperately you held on to me helped me let go of most of the anger. I welcome your touch. Mika let out a moan. They looked at each other as best they could while Rob finished preparing her drink. Here's your cosmopolitan. It's strong, but not fire-breathing. Drink slowly. I don't want you to get drunk. I want to talk. Here, hold it with both hands. You'll spill it. Rob looked at the glass disapprovingly. Damn it, it's like cosmopolitan glasses are specially designed to pour alcohol. He joked, perhaps so that half of it splashes out on your bow. Mika took the glass with both hands, cringing as she was still spilling the drink. Her hands were shaking. Rob grabbed her arms on both sides, standing behind her. He placed his hands on hers to stabilize the glass. She brought the drink to her lips, which wrapped her arms around Rob. She was glowing. She took a sip. He walked away a bit while Mika concentrated on not spilling her cocktail. She was proud that she hadn't spilled another drop when she suddenly realized that Rob was no longer behind her. Her head whipped around, almost causing a sonic boom. Rob was at the door. He found an open door. Her mind screamed, He's leaving me. Without thinking, she rushed forward. Nuo, Mika screamed, letting go of the glass of Cosmopolitan, which crashed on the kitchen floor. However, she managed to reach Rob before the glass touched the ground. She threw her arms around him, wailing pitifully as he walked past the open door. Don't leave me. Don't go. I didn't do this. I'm yours, only yours. Rob was dazed and may have suffered a concussion. He wrapped his arms around Mika, at least to prevent her from striking again. He picked her up and led her to the couch, where she buried her face in his neck again. Mika continued to hold on to him, pressing her face into his neck as they settled back onto the couch. He didn't leave her. He closed the door and brought her here. He was telling her something. Now she could touch him, although before he did not want her touch. Now he hugged her back. What other walls could she break through? Mika decided to find out. Leaving her face in his neck, she purred seductively. You want to take advantage of me, right? Rob, already accustomed to phrases that had nothing to do with the previous topic of conversation, thought it over. An hour ago, he didn't know if he'd ever be able to touch her again, 
and now he was thinking about having sex with her right now before their conversation. But he decided that he was too tense. If he does this to her now, she will not be able to speak adequately later. And there was one small moment he was not sure that he was even capable of doing this now. He sighed, No, business first. You're still too on edge. I'll make you another Cosmo. But this time I'll pour it into an old-fashioned glass, he added, hoping that this time the drink would end up in his wife instead of on the floor, and that the glass wouldn't break while drinking it. Micah pouted as he began to untangle himself from her embrace, but she didn't do it easily. Rob's path to the liquor counter led him past that very same door, and this gave Mika another moment of anxiety. She didn't relax until he passed by. A smile slowly spread across her lips as she saw that Rob didn't even slow down as he walked past his escape route. Mika was extremely happy that her husband didn't rush to the door to leave her which was already raising the bar higher than it had been in a while. Rob returned smiling and handed her the drink. He also had his own in his hand. Mika glanced at the door. It was still closed. She allowed herself another smile. Mika knew she was still very tense. She took a sip, assessing her feelings. Rob wasn't going to leave her. If he wanted her to leave, he would have simply said so. She basically kicked herself out that night and Rob just let her come back. It was good, but they hadn't discussed it yet. Mika spent the first night on her sister's couch before realizing she could sleep in her guest room. She knew she was going crazy and needed to calm down. Mika decided to start a conversation. I, I'm sorry, Rob, for a lot of things. I'm nervous myself. It seems to me that my neck is already under the guillotine, and I constantly hear the blade starting to slide down. Sorry for making everything so difficult. Rob, looking at her with sympathy, was at the same time very wary. He spoke quietly, as if there was a box of nitroglycerin in the room that could explode with any loud remark. It's okay, Mika. Can you explain some things to me in simple words and without unnecessary details? My questions will be simple. I'm not trying to catch you, I just want to understand. Be honest and don't worry. If I don't understand something, I'll just ask one more question. Will you be comfortable in this format? Mika nodded quickly. She was grateful that Rob took the lead. This was the fastest way for him to get the answers he needed. Mika was afraid that in her condition she would only complicate things if she tried to conduct the conversation herself. Mika, why did you come home so quickly? Mika nodded happily. She could answer this question. Julie called me. She said she called you and you said you were ready to talk to me and I should come home. Rob's eyebrows raised. Wow, you got there fast. I doubt she made it to her house before you got there. Puzzled, Mika asked. What? I don't understand. Rob realized that he might have accidentally set Julie up by thinking out loud. He didn't think that Mika would be against it in this case, so he decided to continue. He said, Okay, Mika, why are you so nervous? Mika blinked a few times, trying to connect Rob's last two statements, but then decided to simply answer the last question. I'm afraid that you will leave me, divorce me. Why do you think so? Rob could hardly restrain the urge to twirl his arms, imitating a flightless bird. Why you feel like I cheated on you? because you yourself told me that you were with another man and showed me, as you said, the proof. It was fake, she screamed. If I wasn't almost sure of this, you wouldn't be here. Mika, why did you make up such a story? I thought about the possibility of you having an affair. I decided that I needed to do something to make you continue to be interested in me. I wanted to add some spice to our relationship. Wait, don't ask. I understand that I really ruined everything. Suddenly her eyes opened wide. Oh wait, no, that's not what I meant. She stood up in panic. Rob pulled her back, calming her. SHH. He hugged her for a moment before starting again. Calm down. It's okay, just explain. Use whatever words you want. If I have a question, I'll ask it. There's nothing to worry about. Rob resisted the urge to say, don't worry, to see how far she would jump. Why, yes, Rob, okay? Why, I wanted you to stay interested in me. 
Sincere love shone in her eyes. Okay, I understand that, but what makes you think I might have an affair? Mika sighed heavily, obviously remembering the difficult moments. Why you weren't home until late in the evening? You came in tired and irritated, and I couldn't calm you down. I used to be able to do this, but then I thought that you were just tired of me. She paused and looked into his eyes before continuing. I showed up at your work for lunch unannounced to surprise you. You might have fooled them, but not me. You were miserable. I stood by, watching while you finished your business. And then, before I could come over, you were already immersed in work again. Mika swallowed, her voice full of bitterness. I saw what was happening around you. Some of the women in the office were clearly not indifferent to you, a promising young leader. Her head dropped, and she swallowed again. They looked at you just as closely as I did. Mika shuddered. Your promotion was wonderful, but then the routine came, and with it came the worries. Sometimes I even regret that you accepted it. I'm sorry for testing you, but I did it because I love you. When I saw the way those women looked at you, I got worried. Mika was still worried her hands clenched into fists as if she was trying to console herself. Rob's face hardened. Oh God, I knew I saw you through the glass wall in the hallway. I tried to go out several times to talk to you, but you were already gone. Micah, after this happened several times, I started to think that you were dating someone you met at one of the corporate parties. I thought that you were the object of someone's seduction from the management. I thought that you were doing this out of politeness, and perhaps for the sake of my career, naively not understanding their intentions. I never thought that you would do this until you staged this performance. It added fuel to the fire of my fears. Mika jumped up from the couch and rushed to Rob, suddenly hugging him on her knees. Oh no, honey, I didn't cheat, I was spying. I was nervous. A couple of times, some girls in the office asked me to have lunch together. I agreed. That's how I got to know the office gossip and made it clear to them who they would deal with if they tried to take you away from me. I'm ready to fight for my man. I'm sorry for spying, honey, but everything was so difficult for you, and our relationship began to go downhill. Rob, I know it's not in your nature to cheat on me or turn down a promotion. You probably wouldn't do that. I was afraid someone in the office was targeting you. Honestly, I'm convinced that it is so. You are so overwhelmed with work that you do not notice how they are trying to win you. I knew that I had to raise the bar because the game had already begun, even if you did not realize it. Rob, you are ambitious, and I used to be so vain that I thought I fit in perfectly with your world, even though I didn't strive for the social ladder. You're right, I'm naive. I was proud of your success. I know I look good, maybe not like a model, but I know how to dress up. I thought that I was the perfect decoration on the arm of a rising leader. Thanks to you, we entered a new world. When I saw how others live in the office and at parties, I was even more convinced of this. I was already proud of you, and seeing the fruits of your success, my pride in you only increased. My man achieved this. We moved to better housing, we had more money, I could afford more purchases. Mika fell silent, her voice became quieter. I felt like I had to learn how to play the role of a corporate wife. You had to know how to carry yourself, how to get noticed in high places, something like that. If you wanted to advance your career that way, maybe I could do this for you because I am completely in love with you. I would do anything for you, but I would hate being with someone else. It would leave deep wounds. I don't want that. I would be ashamed of you. If you decided to advance in this way, I think you would also not want me to sacrifice myself for your career advancement. I can assure you that I will sacrifice myself for you and fall in love with a person who would offer you a promotion. In exchange for your wife, these are completely different things. I could never love such a person. But Rob, I've heard stories at your company parties that confirm that this kind of thing happens. Men and women often become playthings in the hands of managers for the sake of promotion. Having an affair with someone at work is quite common, even if it doesn't seem to be the case. It completely overwhelmed me. I became obsessed with what happens after work in your new corporate world. If there are women out there who are willing to engage in such relationships for the sake of promotion, 
I was afraid that you might be in for some kind of commitment. If you were required to prove your dedication to career growth in this way, Mika swallowed again, looking down. You know what I'm talking about. She began to nervously rub her hands together a little more. I know that some of the women at work would be happy to join you if you would let them. Thank God I don't see that desire in you. Mika sighed heavily. I thought that I was part of your ambitions, that I was so special to you that you went to great lengths to win me and then keep me. I thought that I was some kind of trophy for you. I know that you love me. But then I began to think that it was an accident that you accidentally fell in love with me. And now you have a choice from a whole crowd of more attractive women, but I won in contrast. Them. You stayed with me because you wanted, and not because you made a promise or an oath and had to do it. I don't want you to just put up with me. I want to win against those other women in a fair fight. I wasn't sure I could. Other girls seemed prepared for a sex fight. To me, sex is love. But an energetic girl who can keep her cool would seem more exciting to you. I was at a significant disadvantage. Mika pulled away, looking pained. Rob let her stand, and she began to pace around the room. She waved her arms helplessly, and Rob wondered which of them first came up with this gesture. Then I stopped being able to calm you down after a hard day at work. I felt like I couldn't reach you anymore. And then it seemed to me that you didn't want to touch me at all, that I didn't excite you anymore. And then I just got scared. I know why this happens. I know what women are like. I was afraid that I would become another source of stress for you, something that causes irritation, the opposite of what I wanted. If I couldn't help you, it meant you couldn't take off your Superman cape even at home. I was afraid that you felt like you had to give me more and more at home so I wouldn't be disappointed. I didn't want you to do anything for me out of obligation. I didn't pull away, I didn't like giving you space. My friends remained my friends, and you were my man. Mika plopped down on the sofa next to Rob, clasping his hand. I suddenly realized that I wanted to go somewhere to a tropical island and live in a shack, without work, without anything that worries you. Just you and me. I would live, I ate, slept, and loved only you. You are all I need, and I will gladly give up everything else in order to be with you. Tears began to roll down Mika's cheeks again. The more I thought, the more I felt like a burden to you. I couldn't bring you any comfort, and you just had to pay attention to me. You didn't want to be around me anymore. I tried to bring you back, dispel your thoughts about work. I, I failed, and I knew, if I feel it, then the women at work see it too. I know how women can act. Yes. Mika wiped her face with her hand and continued in a quiet voice. I saw how this could happen. You were late at work or in meetings, and one of them would just take advantage of the moment. You would realize everything later, but by then it's already done. The guilt would eat you up inside. You set incredibly high demands on yourself, and you would have to do something about it, but one of the noble solutions you could come up with is to leave me, because I don't. Deserve me. It would be your sacrifice, but it would have the opposite effect. You would think that by leaving me after betrayal, you would set me free. But it would not give me freedom, it would crush me. Mika began to sob. One night I was left alone in our bed when you couldn't come to me. You stayed in the living room, thinking that I could sleep without you, although I couldn't. I cried trying to do it as quietly as possible, so that you wouldn't hear. I was afraid that if you heard, it would become another problem for you. I couldn't bring you joy. I became disgusted with you. It was like you left me forever. Room from me, but I felt that you had already left. You left to escape from me. I lay there, feeling the pain growing inside me. I realized that losing half of you would be better than losing you completely. I accepted the idea that you would cheat on me. I decided that I would not leave you. Actually, I wanted you to do this. You had to find some kind of relief for yourself before life broke you. I prayed that you would not find it in another woman, and that guilt would not push you away from me. I started researching cheating, its causes and consequences. You wouldn't even notice how it happened. We women know how to use our powers when we read the signals correctly. Darling, right now you are emitting such signals. I'm scared to death. I told you how desperately I want to keep you, 
that I'm even ready to share you with someone, just not to lose you. But I also know that you won't be able to respect the doormat. I don't want to be on my own. Dig a grave, and perhaps she has already done it by being honest. Mika curled up, as if shrinking in on herself. Rob realized his mouth was open. He closed it abruptly, making a click. Mika didn't notice, completely immersed in her experiences. Collecting herself, she continued, Of course, I couldn't just let you have an affair. What if you like her more? If she's part of your new business world, and you want to immerse yourself in it completely, then I'll become the other woman who can be discarded as an unnecessary burden. What if she turns out to be more interesting because she is new? All your potential lovers in the office probably have much more experience than me. They are most likely much more skilled in love and more exciting when it comes to the point of intimacy. But they have had this experience with previous lovers, so they are used more than I am a one master model, and that master was you. Mika looked amazed, and there was sadness in her voice. But maybe they can do things that I haven't even thought about. I just wanted to show you that I can be exciting, that even though I have no experience, I'm ready to receive him with you. I wanted to show that I can be seductive and more exciting than the always good girl. I will become a bad girl for you. Mika brought her face closer to his with a concerned expression on hers. Rob, I tried really hard. I studied everything. I watched videos, read forums, and chatted. I even took an online course. I wanted to make sure you didn't miss anything. Because I'm a naive wife. I read different funny stories, tried to understand what a man like you might like that I haven't done yet. Perhaps because of my insecurity or because I was on the edge, I got everything mixed up. There are so many things I never thought about, but they are discussed as a matter of course. The more experienced women in your office have a huge advantage over me. I had to do something. Mika spoke in a lower voice, looking at the floor. So I came up with what you saw the other day, and it almost ruined us. I'm so sorry, I tried to take the stress off of you, but instead I added it, and a lot of it. Was not at all what you needed, and not at all what I wanted to achieve. In desperation, I came up with a crazy idea. I didn't want to give up without a fight. Mika suddenly fell silent, blushing to the roots of her hair, as if she was afraid to even look at Rob. She continued speaking, but very quietly. I probably could have expressed myself better. Rob didn't immediately catch the ambiguity until Mika brought it to his attention. Now he tried not to laugh. He thought she was absolutely gorgeous. He was still angry, but his anger was gradually melting away. As Julie said, the cure for resentment towards Mika is Mika herself, of course, if she was not a traitor and a liar. Mika was so worried that Rob understood that he could not help her yet. She needed to talk it out. Now I've created even more confusion, Rob. Let me get this straight. Here's the thing, darling. I'm ready to go to bed with you or please you at your first word. I'll be better than any Labrador you've ever seen. Rob was horrified by her words, but then realized that Mika meant submission. Seeing the amazement on her husband's face, Mika began to speak more and more confusedly. I, if you want me to be more difficult to reach, just say so. But I know that when you conquer something, you expect loyalty. I have always been there for you. You, but we got to the point where I could no longer interest you even so that you would give me a gift of pity, and God, how I needed it. I didn't need physical relief, I needed yours. Touch. I realized that I had to fight. I couldn't fight you, that would be terrible. But if you thought you might lose your favorite toy, even one you were used to, maybe it would pique your interest. I tried leaving hints, then keeping my distance. When that didn't work either, I decided to resort to that unfortunate cinnamon roll trick. Rob wondered how to respond to this confession. He was very grateful for her frankness. Mika, you're right. Working in a new place is a serious test, and they really tried to seduce me. Mika tried to hold back her nervous tears, but was glad he answered. Rob continued in a soft tone, as if he were talking about something very dangerous. I really want to move up the career ladder, Micah, but I realize that at this level, every step is dangerous. The faster you rise to the top, 
the more people who try to push you down. When you go higher, you can protect yourself, but I haven't reached that level yet. I have to balance. And yes, two vice presidents proposed to me. One is an older, but very beautiful woman. Mika's heart began to pound. She did not know this woman personally, but she had an idea of who she might be talking about. The woman was discussed in whispers at dinner tables as something terrible and untouchable, as if saying her name out loud could cause her to appear. Mika quickly collected her thoughts as she heard Rob add, and the second vice president is a man. Mika couldn't help but laugh, although she was shaking slightly from surprise. Rob's eyebrows furrowed, and he said sarcastically, Yeah, laugh. I used it to escape her. Then he warned her seriously, Mika, stay away from this woman, she will not give you peace. It's like the Medusa effect she gets into your thoughts. Seriously? Mika tried to hide the excitement in her voice. Yes, I even woke up at night, seeing her in my dreams, and at these moments some parts of my body literally turned to stone. Mika's eyes narrowed in anger. All your recently earned points just vanished from me, just disappeared. She smiled at Rob, sensing that he needed support after opening up to her. She didn't expect Rob's description of his ordeal at work to be so grim. Honey, how can I help you? Mika sincerely wanted to do something to ease his condition. Rob admitted, I'm just sick of the lipstick mark on my jacket and these panties in my pocket. All of it. I want this job and I want our life to be good for you. But I've been home less often. I constantly feel under threat. Literally the next day after I started work, I started to panic that I couldn't cope. It didn't go away even after a month, it seemed that everything I did was worse. It was only proof of my ability to work, and I didn't feel like I was actually doing anything useful. And at some point this feeling came home. Rob frowned, as if ashamed of his own thoughts. I admit, the couple of times when you tried to turn me on, I felt like I had to perform at the highest level, as if I would be judged even in bed. Even though you gave no such signals, I was so depressed by the need to prove something to everyone that I began to doubt my abilities in literally everything, and soon I simply ceased to be able. In this regard, not for a long time, but for a few days for sure. Oh God, honey, Mika was shocked. This changed a lot. Rob misunderstood her reaction. I know. If a man can't be a man, then he's not a man anymore, right? No, that's not true at all. Mika's eyes literally popped out of their sockets. She was afraid to show any emotion that might inadvertently affect Rob's fragile state. Rob didn't notice her reaction. I was on the edge all the time, and then I started to think that you were moving away from me. I did it all for us, but I failed. And then I lost everything, both strength and confidence in bed. And then you brought it to my face. I wanted to kill both of us, probably you first. Miko wondered what Rob meant by, probably you first. What did he mean? After all, if he had started with himself, it would not have been possible to kill them both. Her thoughts became confused by these details, and she suddenly realized that she was analyzing too much instead of understanding the essence of what was being said. She thought too much about how to help her husband. Rob started to get angry. He looked at her intently, and his face tensed with anger. Do you understand what you did? What did you put in my head? How did this affect my heart? His face turned into one big grimace of anger. Since we started talking about F-words, let's break down a few more. Mika's eyes darted from side to side, trying to understand what Rob was talking about. He didn't let her wonder for long and continued, Yes, I want a wife. I want a devoted wife, not a woman of easy virtue. And you tried to make me believe that you were the second. Mika tried to say something, but Rob, consumed by his anger, didn't let her get a word in. Here's another F word, why? Why would any normal, devoted wife do such a thing? When it all blew up because a plan like this was going to fail, you started backtracking, saying that everything you made me see was actually part of some complex dream. It's like it was a movie and you're trying to convince me that we've never been to Oz. The problem is that I never wanted to go there in the first place, and now I can't get out of there, no matter how hard I click my heels. 
Mika turned pale at his words. He continued, Yes, I understand that all this is not what it seemed, but these images still haunt me. I wake up at night sweating from the nightmares they give me. Rob paused and his voice became calmer. So where are we now? Even if you didn't cheat, I'm now married to a woman who has become incredibly difficult to get along with. Mika's eyes widened in shock. She couldn't believe that her husband actually thought that way. The words just came out of her. I'm sorry I ruined everything like that. I just wanted to love you. I love you. But at some point I felt that I no longer had the right to do this, that I was no longer allowed. It was the last sign of love, the last desperate gesture. I love you, but I was afraid that I would lose your love. I had to do something. She was silent for a moment, considering her words. I loved you so much that I despaired. I loved you so much that I was ready to do anything to keep you. I knew that I could never live without you. I loved you so much that I acted on that knowledge. They looked at each other. Both felt that they were able to explain their feelings. So why didn't they feel better anyway? Mika thought, oh God, it's like we're living in the last scene of The Graduate. I hate this movie. She continued to reflect, at least I'm Catherine Ross though. And Rob, he probably feels like Dustin Hoffman. The conversation between Micah and Rob really helped clarify a lot of things. This was necessary, but still did not give them the feeling that the problems had been solved. Rob later said, Our conversation was like the Normandy landings. This was a big and important step, but the end of the war is still far away. Mika was alarmed that her husband compared their frank conversation to military operations. These are not the kind of comparisons that make a young wife's heart flutter or give her confidence in her position. Mika didn't like that Rob asked her to sleep in another room that night. She called her sister in tears as soon as she reached the guest bedroom. Julie was surprised at first. She sighed, realizing that Mika probably hadn't put her best foot forward. She warned Rob that this could happen. Julie assumed Rob might call her tomorrow. This role of volunteer family advisor was becoming more and more difficult for her. However, Julie was not so upset when Mika told her the details of her conversation with Rob. Julie's answers on the phone made her husband laugh. Look on the bright side, sis. Rob hugged you. He said he wanted things to work out. He listened to you. He trusts that you haven't cheated on him. And let me get that last one out of the way. Moment he kissed you goodnight. How did you manage to take this as a defeat? Mika's answers were inaudible, but Julie's reaction was quite eloquent. Her husband grinned, imagining what Mika might have said on the other end of the line. Julie responded to Mika's new stream of objections. Yes, you said his kiss wasn't too passionate, but it wasn't a goodbye kiss. Julie's husband stopped reading the article he was interested in. His wife's conversation turned out to be much more interesting. He put his tablet aside to openly watch Julie's reaction. Watching her husband smile, Julie continued, No, Micah, I think you're really making progress, honey. If he spanked you, I'd say you're fine, and anything that doesn't involve choking is already a positive result. Yesterday I thought that he would not listen to your explanations at all for the next three years. I based this on how long it would take for him to marry another woman after divorcing you, much further than I thought. Mika's quiet howl of despair could be heard even from across the room. Julie's husband could hardly contain his laughter. No, no, calm down. No, I'm not joking. Who would joke about such a topic? Miku could be heard even from the other end of the room, although her words were impossible to understand. Julie's husband nodded in approval at her sister's uncontrollable emotions, which caused Julie to widen her eyes and look at him in disbelief. Please calm down, Mika. Look, this was the best possible option. I was also afraid that you might come home and find that he had done something terrible to himself. I mean, you were his last hope, and when you pulled the rug out from under him the way you did. Mika screamed like an air raid siren. Julie hastily pressed the mute button and hissed at her husband, who was now literally choking with laughter, covering his face with his hands. She then pressed the button again to respond to Mika. No, 
Please calm down. You're too loud. You've probably already woken him up, and also the neighbors. However, Julie's look, with which she usually put her husband in his place, only fueled his amusement. Of course, what you did was that bad. Are you out of your mind, Mika? Oh, I'm sorry, that's not what I meant. Don't worry, we're working on it too. Julie finally calmed Mika down and ended the conversation by citing the need to spend time with her husband, who had recently done something special for her. And that was it. He helped with the kids and took care of the house while Julie sat with Rob all morning, discussing this whole crazy situation. Although her husband was not so perfect, he continued to laugh at how she, in his words, turned her hand into a theatrical drama with icing. That scoundrel laughed every time he saw her wash her hand again that evening. However, Julie couldn't wipe the sly smile off her face as she remembered what her husband had done to give her deep, restful sleep. Despite her sister's concerns, Julie was confident that Mika was in a better place than she had been in the last 24 hours. She also thought Rob was in better shape. He was disappointed and angry again, but no longer despairing. He now knew that his wife had not betrayed him. Now he could focus on how to deal with a stressful situation at work. Yes, better position was a relative term for Rob at this point. Still, Julie doubted Rob would want to go back a day, despite everything that had happened. Rob actually felt better. Still a little disoriented, he gradually began to feel the colors of life, the meaning returned to him. Faith in his family was restored, although not yet completely. He also began to feel a renewed passion for his wife. This episode helped him reconsider his priorities. Rob lost his fear of losing his job, knowing that Micah would support him even if they had to break their lease and damage their credit history. He felt like he was regaining control of his life. Another important detail was that Mika was holding on to him so desperately. When a beautiful woman throws herself at you with such passion, it does wonders for the ego. Knowing that he was no longer competing for Mika was a huge relief. Understanding that she still desires him, that she doesn't see him as someone who has lost his power and ability, and that she desperately wants to be with him are powerful aphrodisiacs. They were so strong that they helped him regain his faded sexual desire. Late that night, Rob felt something else. He sat up abruptly in bed and happily threw back the covers, watching as his body began to respond again, like a conductor's baton keeping the rhythm. He wondered if he would eventually be able to synchronize these movements with a bolero rhythm. Smiling slightly wryly, Rob was amazed at how much a little self-confidence and a sense of control over his life could do for a man. He wanted to test his new state in action but he understood that it was too early. He needed to deal with the ghosts that still haunted him before he felt ready again. Some parts of Mika's performance that Friday still evoked painful associations in him. He still could not get rid of the images that she had so vividly painted for him and which now remained in his mind. Unable to sleep, Rob came up with a plan of action. Now that he knew Mika wasn't cheating, he decided to focus on what she was trying to do for him, add a spark to their relationship. Much of her behavior, her outfit, her voice, her movements were quite arousing in a different context. If it weren't for that terrible frosting scene, things might have been different. Rob tried to take advantage of the advice Julie gave him, mentioning that her husband might have used a similar technique. Instead of trying to forget the image, he tried to imagine that the frosting was his. Maybe it will work over time, but not on the first night. Instead, Rob focused on remembering what Mika said and how she moved. She tried to create a new image for him. Rob tried to pick out the best from her performance, and it worked, although not right away. Rob thought with a smile that if it worked at least a little, that meant it could work again. He was glad it wasn't a physical problem. His physical condition was gradually improving, but now he had to deal with the chaos in his head. Rob looked for all his insecurities and negative images so that he could consciously label them as false. And it worked too. His thoughts began to cause him less pain. But there was one image that would not go away. It was that painful moment when he imagined the tracks of another man. This image continued to haunt him, causing him to twist and turn in his bed. Rob always believed that this was his territory, 
his domain, and Mika took it away from him. It still stung and hurt him. Rob knew that if he could get to the root of this problem, he could destroy the entire mindset that was clinging to it. But how can you convince yourself to the end that it was really just icing, as she said? How can one find absolute confirmation? Suddenly Rob sat up abruptly on the bed. Of course, there was a way to check all this, but it was disgusting. He could gain complete confidence, but at the cost of his peace and pride. If he decides to do this and suddenly discovers that Mika lied, he will be angry with himself for the rest of his life. Rob knew that no one was forcing him to do this, but he understood that if he did this and deceived himself, he would never forgive himself, and then he will no longer be able to trust himself or anyone else. But on the other hand, if it gets rid of his doubts and allows him to live normally again. Rob wondered, should a man be so eager for this kind of information? Isn't it enough to simply ask yourself the question, has my wife become a woman of easy virtue? Do you really want to know the answer? And then what? But there were also possible positives. Confirmation of Mika's loyalty and reassurance that she still loved him. The positive aspects weighed much more than the negative ones or not, all the joys of life against complete hopelessness. These scales could not balance. It was all or nothing. How can you refuse such a choice when fate calls? Damn it, how can you, having received such a choice, simply walk away? It was like a call from fate. Although this may sound like hyperbole, it was perhaps the only way to be sure of Micah's fidelity, and Rob needed it for his peace of mind. Accepting the challenge of fate, he resolutely got out of bed. Now is not the time for half measures. Rob pulled back the hangers in his closet dramatically as if he were parting the curtain on a crucial scene. Here it is. His enemy. Rob's brain rejoiced. Here she is. She's not as injured as we were led to believe. He shook his head, correcting himself. If we're going to take cues from Star Trek, at least be Kirk and not Khan. Rob realized that his decisive steps across the room had caused these thoughts. He stared at his opponent, the jacket he had worn on that terrible day when Mika had tried to trick him into believing he had cheated. Mika then missed his mouth and smeared something sticky on his lapel. Rob hated himself for getting caught up in this game, but he knew he had to figure this out once and for all. Having finished inspecting the jacket, he rubbed his finger along the stained lapel. Now there was only one thing left to do, check. He ran his finger over the fabric, then brought it to his mouth and gently touched it with his tongue. The world froze. If what he just tasted turns out to be salty instead of sweet, he will be destroyed. But, sweet taste. Sugar. Rob closed his eyes tightly. He wasn't sure what exactly to feel. Then a wave of relief washed over him. He felt like a fool. So much pain both for her and for him turned out to be in vain. And all he had to do to avoid this was what Mika wanted so much from the very beginning, to try what she offered him. Rob pressed the lapel to his lips and let his tongue dissolve the sweet trail left on the fabric. It was the cinnamon roll frosting. Rob suddenly woke up with a start. If someone walked in and saw him sitting alone in a room, licking his own lapel, it would be quite difficult to explain. He quickly pulled away from the jacket, removing it from his face. Now, thinking about Micah's words that terrible evening, Rob began to see them in a new light. In this context, her words did not mean what he originally thought. She wasn't trying to say that what was on her body was real and her ridicule was a lie. No, she meant it literally. What she showed him was really icing sweetness, real sweet icing. Rob wondered, where did Mika even get the idea to use frosting as a substitute for something else? What the hell was she reading? He seemed to need to look at her computer again. Damn it, he thought. I really need to get back on her computer again, don't I? Although this time it was to test Mika's explanation, not to gather evidence that his marriage had failed. Rob pushed the thought aside and returned to what was most important. His wife told the truth. This whole nightmare turned out to be a failed role-playing game. It's incredible how powerful the theater is. And if she was serious, then Mika was really serious about starting an exciting new family life for him. Rob shook his head, trying to clear his thoughts, 
and remembered exactly what she was offering him, to be his personal woman of easy virtue. Mika, such a good girl, wanted him to take her any way he wanted to reduce stress. Most importantly, she tried to give herself to him to the extent that he gave himself to her. This seemed like a very practical definition of devotion, the exact opposite of what he had thought before. Rob worked a terrible job every day for Mika, and she gave herself to him when he got home. He didn't need technology, love, encouragement, or affirmation of their relationship. It wasn't love or romance. This was not their intimacy. In a way, it wasn't even sex. It was a primal release from primal stress. He just had to let off some steam. He had to get rid of rudeness, injustice, and cruelty. When Rob returned to the bedroom, he began to understand what Mika was trying to do that evening, get him upset and angry so that he would let off some steam. Mika knew that Rob's default was always to protect her. Sure, they had rough sex when they wanted, but she wanted him to really let his feelings out. So she set up a scenario to take him out of his usual approach to her, all so that he would release his problems. In his imagination, he heard her voice as she looked at him lovingly after she managed to help her husband shed the image of a werewolf and become human again. Rob shook his head again, thinking, Wow, Mika endured so much for me, so quietly, I didn't even realize how bad she was. She says we are in everything together. Rob realized it. He closed his eyes and said out loud into the void, Oh my God, Mika loves me. She doesn't hate me. I didn't lose her. She still loves me. Rob fell onto the bed. He couldn't help himself. He was a strong man, but it all came out. Rage, disappointment, and heartache. After ten minutes of intense struggle, the evil left his heart and mind. Now it had to leave his body. He was so exhausted that he crawled into the bathroom. As soon as he was in place, he vomited violently. Realizing that this wouldn't be his last bout of nausea and realizing how exhausted he was, Rob climbed into the bathtub and turned on the shower. He let the water wash away the dirt from him as his system cleared the terror over and over again. Mika was suddenly next to him. She heard him suddenly throw up and vomit in the next room. She pulled back the shower curtain to find her husband sitting in the bathtub with the shower running, partially covered in his own vomit. It was a strange moment. Cute? She exclaimed, asking a thousand questions in one word. Rob smiled, reaching out a shaking hand to hers. He nodded. This is not the end yet. I need to figure out some things. But everything will be okay, Mika. Mika knelt down outside the bathtub. Now she leaned over the edge of the tub to wrap her arms around his back in support as he shook convulsively. The shower felt like warm summer rain to her. Rob sat with his hand reaching out to her neck as she held him tightly to her. He smiled as the last spasm passed through his body and watched as the water washed away his pain. Emika. Yes, Rob, do you still like cinnamon rolls? Mika was wary of his question. To her surprise, Rob managed to crack a weak smile. She answered carefully. I wish. I'll follow you, honey. Then, when I'm done spilling my guts, I want you to attack me like I'm the juiciest cinnamon roll ever made and the last of its kind. Her eyes opened wide. She couldn't believe her ears, although she really wanted it to be true. Is it true? Absolutely. Despite his condition, Mika wanted to kiss her husband. She said quietly, Rob, I'll do it with pleasure. There was a slight sparkle in Rob's eyes that complimented his weak smile. Having finally made sure that reconciliation was in full swing, Mika beamed. Oh, honey, let your innocent little wife show you that the two are not mutually exclusive. Although Rob felt better and stopped vomiting, he stayed in the shower until the hot water ran out. Mika climbed into the bathtub behind him. The water cooled too quickly for both of them. Mika dried them and sent Rob to bed until he regained his strength. Before she could keep her promise, Rob was fast asleep. His face looked so peaceful that she did not dare wake him. Mika returned to the bathroom to mop up the water from the floor. She felt inspired. She was glowing at what had happened. Rob needed her, and she was able to help him. He seemed much more himself, approaching her the way he did before. 
showering with Rob was wonderful, although she knew it wasn't as enjoyable for poor Rob. She held him, and he clung to her. He continued to hold it even when he was vomiting. Mika leaned over Rob's sleeping body to kiss his cheek, intending to let him sleep. Suddenly, he pulled her down. He hugged her tightly for a long time, thanked her, and said that he loved her. Mika felt that the pain had not gone away yet. She could still mess it up, but he said he loved her. She inflicted a terrible wound on him, but he still loved her. He fell asleep again, just like that. He may not have meant what he said, but that made his words even more believable, didn't it? Is there something like truth in a dream similar to truth in wine? Mika was sitting at the computer when Rob entered the room. He looked incredibly rested after a long, sound sleep. He saw Mika on the family laptop and his thoughts began to thicken like storm clouds. He asked for her computer. She looked puzzled. Trust me, he said with some sinister undertone in his voice, a strange combination of message and tone. Of course, Rob, she handed him the laptop. Opening Micah's browser history, Rob found the same disturbing sights he had seen before, but now he had a specific goal. He read several pages and notes that he had only briefly glanced at before. Now everything took on a new meaning. Mika wasn't looking to get involved in these things. She was simply exploring how to improve their marriage. The courses she took were online quizzes with titles like Sexual Revolution in Your Marriage and How High Is Your Intelligence in the Bedroom. He especially liked titles like Bed, Fuck and Fauna Quick Guide and Become a Genius in Your Bedroom with a PhD in Sex. He noticed that Mika entered the chat and asked several questions there, but all of them were aimed at clarification and none of the conversations developed into personal correspondence. Then there were sites with stories. Nothing on them suggested women who wanted to spread their wings by indulging in infidelity. These were stories about wives trying to make their husbands happy. But oh my God, some of them were pretty kinky. Many sites described wives who made their husbands happy by cheating right in front of their eyes. What a terrible world. Poor Mika found herself in an avalanche of material that was new to her. She told him what she had read and heard at his company's parties. Rob always thought she'd be the first to shout bullshit for such things. Now he realized how exhausted and confused Mika was. Handing her back the computer, Rob smiled and his mood completely changed. Mika watched him carefully, studying his facial expression and body language. She also watched as he opened the sites she had visited. How did he do it? How did he know? Is Rob a magician? She was worried until she saw him smile. His behavior before and after the search made her think. Mika looked into Rob's eyes as she took the laptop back. She quickly opened his company's corporate directory while he went to the kitchen to look for something light. Rob was still in the kitchen, pleased with himself for winning Micah's love again. He was delighted with Mika herself. His ever better mood now made him wonder, sandwich or smoothie, when suddenly he heard her piercing scream. He ran to the dining table where Mika sat in shock, trying not to look at the image on the screen. Mika was shaking. Rob hugged her, looking into her eyes. Are you okay, Mika? Are you okay? Mika replied. Why, yes. I just opened a photo of that vice president you were talking about. She's like a combination of Grace Kelly and Raquel Welch. Her hair changes color at different angles. I swear they turned into flames in one shot. Rob straightened up instantly, nodding grimly. He whispered as if he were in a cemetery. Yes, I know. Mika, still shaking, slowly turned her head and looked at Rob with great respect. There was admiration in her gaze, almost bordering on awe. You refused her and did it for me. Rob winced as he recalled that moment. It was not easy for him to admit. I even pretended to be gay to get out. It's a good thing she's not a redhead. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to resist. Rob clearly wasn't boasting, still shaken by the memory. You know what? Mika said, shaking her head in admiration. What? You have restored all your trust points. Please do two things for me, Rob. Of course, dear. What? First of all, turn off this computer. I... I don't think I can touch it again. Rob watched Micah carefully as he turned off the computer. 
she wasn't really looking at the screen. It was clear that she never wanted to see the femme fatale again. When the task was completed, Mika gave Rob the following instructions. Have sex with me now, Rob. Right now, I need confidence. Hell, I might even think about her. She's so hot. Mika couldn't help but laugh, looking sympathetically at his dejected expression as he remembered how he managed to escape the trap of that siren. Then he added, Give me back the computer. I want to order you a red-haired wig. She lightly slapped his arm, pretending to be offended by his joke, but then shuddered, remembering the image of that vice president. Rob gave up that much for her. Mika quickly handed him the computer, hugged his neck and said, I'll help you choose. Later, Micah and Rob had a very friendly and frank conversation. Honey, can I voice part of my plan again? I want to be your support. I want you to know that you can count on me even in the most difficult situations. She took a deep breath, gathering her courage. Rob appreciated her efforts. Honey, I want to be your stress reliever, your conquest, your slave, your whatever. I want to be the one you need. Just call me on the way back home if you want something special. If I have an hour or two, I can turn into what you need. Just pick up the phone, place an order, and then come home to shop and give free reign to your desires. Mika nodded hopefully. Mika became increasingly agitated as she described all possible scenarios to Rob, and he noticed. He also began to feel excited by her words. With despair in her eyes, she looked at Rob. Darling, you don't have to think about pleasing me when you come home. I can do it myself if necessary. Just give permission and I'll do it right in front of you. No pressure ever. Just let me be a part of it, a part of you. Let me do this for you. Her bottom lip trembled as she said quietly, Quit your damn job, Rob. We can work together at McDonald's. They are always hiring. I will be happy if I have you. Do you know why I was hoping that if you thought you were losing me, you would reconsider your priorities? Because I did it myself. When I thought I was losing you, I realized that I could be happy being your toy, dominatrix, slave, whatever you choose the role of the day, and even. Mika gasped, gathering her courage, even sharing you, if that's all I can get without losing you completely. I also realized that I was a pretty boring partner in bed. This created a double problem. First of all, you always had to take the initiative. I was passionate, but I never helped you. I was like a doll. You always had to be the leader because I was too passive. Mika stopped, and it dawned on her. You know, I couldn't have been so frank two years ago. This is a clear plus of everything that happened. The thought that I could lose you made me rethink everything. Now I really want to surprise you. Sex is an area where I simply cannot let you get bored. It can kill a relationship. Rob smiled. Mika, maybe you didn't say what you wanted and didn't take it yourself, but you never refused me and always happily agreed to everything I offered to try. Ah, honey, we've tried some pretty interesting things. You've never been a dead fish. In fact, you were always completely involved. There's something to be said for being enthusiastic, even if you don't take the lead. Mika slipped out of his arms, turning to face him. Her gaze lit up, she involuntarily licked her lips, as if she wanted to devour him. She said, I have a practical suggestion on how to check if this plan works. Let's take it for a test drive. I'm not talking about us making love. I'm talking about a therapy session. Mika extended her hand to Rob. He took it. She closed her eyes. It was a conscious gesture, a sign of acceptance on his part. She gently pulled him behind her to lift him off the couch. Stepping back, she led him down the hallway to their bedroom. Mika and Rob acted like newlyweds all day, ordering Chinese food delivery later. Rob made Mika answer the phone in a very short kimono. She showed more skin on the beach, but it was fun because it seemed playfully raunchy. Mika was happy to prove her willingness to break her stereotypical habits. She had no desire to excite other men, but if it turned her husband on, she would drive naked through any fast food joint. They were relaxing with drinks in the middle of the living room on the floor. Rob put pillows under his head, and Mika used his stomach as her own. She said slowly, Maybe we should introduce some rules. This is more so that I can be sure that everything will work for you, 
and not to limit you. If we need to add more rules in the future, please do so, but we'll both have to agree to them, okay? Of course, Rob answered with a slight smile. If what they were already doing was within the bounds, then the rules certainly wouldn't be too strict. Nothing came to his mind that could ruin this moment. Mika continued. Every day I will be ready to provide you with this service if you don't call and say that you don't want anything today, okay? She laughed when she saw his surprised look. I just don't want to lie around for two hours and then find out that you had a late dinner with clients. She smiled. Rob laughed. There she was, his giggling girl, the best friend and companion he could ever wish for. Mika continued. When you come home, everything should be about you always. I'm not the problem, I'm part of the solution. I'm on your side, helping you relieve the pain. We need to understand this, otherwise everything may explode. Absolutely, Rob replied, impressed by her thoughts. Mika really thought it through. Okay, move on. I don't want you talking about company problems or work politics while you're distressing. We relieve stress so your home is a home rather than turning your home into an extension of your work. Rob nodded in agreement and Mika continued. Mika raised her eyebrows slightly as if checking if she was pushing too hard. I hope I don't seem boring to you. I just thought it needed to be said. If implemented correctly, our plan will work great. I hope you take full advantage of a woman who adores you and goes out of her way to help you. I am full of pure love for you, and I understand that men sometimes need different things from a woman. Yes, our plan may seem strange, but with a couple of restrictions, we are completely fine. When we are passionate, I have different desires and needs, and sometimes expressing them makes me feel vulnerable. You always protect me, take care of me, and satisfy my needs, no matter how they change. Sometimes I want you to seduce me, sometimes I want you to throw me on the floor and show me who's boss. Sometimes I want a partner, and sometimes I want a daddy. Understand. But this is all for our time, and not for the time of stress relief. Yes, I understand, Rob replied with a smile, his words laced with amusement. So, when you come home, it's always about you. But there may be evenings when I need to spend our time with you later. Do you mind if we make love one more time tonight? I don't want to lose this. I don't want this to replace our intimate time. I think this is important for us as a couple. What happens when you come home is not part of our intimate life. It is not sex for us as a couple. This is what I do as a wife to support you. When you come home, I'm just your toy, a doll for pleasure. And I don't want this to be intimate for you. Mika's smile became sly. I guarantee that I am better than any trainer. Rob, who was simply enjoying this very pleasant conversation, listened with pleasure to her reasoning. He liked that Mika thought about everything so seriously, and he respected her for that. It was time to show your gratitude. One more addition, Rob added suddenly. Of course, Mika looked at him with curiosity. It's great that they're talking and working on this together. She couldn't wait to hear what Rob had to add. Honey, this whole plan seems to be focused only on me. I'm not sure that's wise. But you have big problems. They shouldn't be just yours, because you're going through all this for both of us, Mika objected. You'll be carrying the lion's share of the load during the week, so maybe on the weekends. He hesitated. Yes, honey. Mika was looking forward to the continuation. How about date night? Mika sat up straight, her eyes lit up. Her world seemed to be returning to normal. Oh, I would really like that, she exclaimed. After all, you help me distress during the week, Rob continued. So let's make date nights out Saturday nights. We will have the whole day to plan and relax for this. Oh, Rob, that would be wonderful, like a young couple in love. But we are still the same, as for me. And that's not all, my dear. I thought maybe we could do the same for you. What? Her voice shrank from surprise. Well, maybe a couple of times a week, we will do everything the way you want. Oh, God. Wait, dear. Wow. Mika didn't expect this. She was stunned. She didn't even think about it. Sunday, she blurted out. Rob was pleased, but at the same time asked out loud, Honey, you just made a commitment to seven days a week, 
and even several times on some of those days. Shouldn't we rearrange a few days? This sounds great, but can we do it? I'm not sure even professional women work seven days a week, he paused, adding with a smile. Mika answered thoughtfully. Well, maybe not forever, but we'll definitely manage for a while. I think we just need a dose of physical intimacy right now after we've lost our way so much. It'll be fun while it lasts. She became serious. We can do this as much as we want, or we don't want to when it's for us. I doubt we'll make love every night of the work week, except for how I help you with stress. I understand that you are tired and there are other things that require attention. But I want this stress relief to be permanent as long as it is needed. I know this won't last forever. You'll get the hang of this job long before it becomes routine instead of fireworks. Rob nodded, showing obvious gratitude, which made Mika glow. She almost purred as she said, Until you get comfortable, I'm yours, honey. Essentially, this is what we are talking about. I'm delighted with this. Of course, there are similar things, but my payment is much nicer. I do this out of love. Any woman will tell you that a person needs a roof over his head and food. You already gave it to me. To be honest, I would trade all this for you and our love. So if we have problems, we will deal with it. We'll just talk and act until everything works again. Then Mika thought again about his offer to spend time with her. Really, Rob, would you do that for me? Yes, this is the least I can do. Hmm. Wow. Women are different, you know. I understand that you can come home and feel better. I hope this helps you shift your focus to home rather than staying on your mind at work. And I might need a little more. I need to be satisfied emotionally too. Do you realize that you are offering more than just a few minutes of physical activity? My time may include role playing. I know guys don't always like it, and I might need more than a couple of minutes. You understand. Rob was so unwavering in his answers that Micah found it incredibly sexy. He answered without hesitation. Yes, absolutely, I completely agree. Mika sighed at his words. Oh, so will you be my slave on Sundays? Yes, I won't even watch football. Mika's eyes widened with excitement. About, oh honey, this is so exciting. Can I? Oh my God. She suddenly became so excited that her voice became hoarse. Not knowing what Micah wanted to do, Rob gave his approval. Yes, do what you want. Obviously sexual slavery activated some internal buttons in her. The effect was even stronger because she didn't even expect this. He wondered if his physical performance could match the effect the idea itself had on Mika. He didn't expect his proposal to be so popular. I thought I had lost you, Rob and now you are offering yourself to me in any form on a silver platter. Mika was afraid that daily use of her body would lead to her feeling like a woman of easy virtue, but this did not happen. Instead, she felt closer to Rob by helping him. She felt his trust and gratitude. This feeling was so strong that it did not allow her to feel like an object. On the contrary, Mika literally glowed after their ritual. Rob was always full of gratitude. He hugged her after he became himself again, which only increased Mika's joy, because that's what Rob wanted. Mika's plan, as crazy as it seemed, worked. He not only pulled Rib out of the quagmire, but also kept his work outside the house, preventing it from getting inside. But besides the fact that his release was regular, the most important aspect of stress relief was that it was Mika's carefully thought-out plan that she happily carried out for him. Rob fell in love with Mika even more. A few months later, Rob admitted that he was doing better at his new job. He learned to cope with pressure that he could not resist. He returned to the team, proving that he was able to cope with stress. Office politics are one thing, but in business results matter, and Rob knew how to get them, which improved everyone's reputation. Rob was aware that Mika's actions could be humiliating, but to his surprise, they both had mixed feelings when he explained to Mika that she was no longer obligated to help him distress on a daily basis. They were both happy that Rob had gained confidence in his work, but the method Mika came up with to help him was a great way for them to strengthen their bond. Mika, although relieved that Rob no longer needed such intensive daily care, 
insisted on continuing for another two weeks before they would consider stopping. She wasn't going to risk losing her man. Every day Mika became more valuable and significant to Rob. He was determined that when they stopped the stress relief program, her special Sunday evenings would not end. He owed Mika his sanity and perhaps his happiness. He practically adored Mika, so why not show it to her every Sunday? When they decided to end their regular stress relief sessions, Mika did it gradually, not suddenly. She remembered how her sister Julia used the expression to pull the rug out from under her when she accidentally did it to Rob with that icing thing. When they missed out on hello, they always made up for it with passionate time together later in the night. Over time, their regular meetings dwindled to occasional, unexpected surprises where Mika would again give Rob just to show him how much she loved him. Mika was surprised how useful her plan was. She felt that they had become closer to each other. Just as Rob was amazed that Mika allowed herself to be treated this way, she was shocked that her man, despite all his rights and opportunities, never abused them. When their daily greetings ended as a mandatory ritual, they both focused not on meeting individual needs, but on expressing love for each other. What could be better than this? Their mutual respect and caring showed how much they valued their relationship and each other as partners. It's been months since Rob and Micah started their stress relief program. Their relationship not only strengthened, but was also reborn at a new level of mutual understanding and intimacy. Rob no longer needed daily stress relieving sessions, but they still practiced it for fun from time to time. Now they are focusing on enjoying their time with each other to the fullest. Their Sunday nights, which were originally supposed to be something special for Mika, became full-fledged dates where they both expressed their love and passion. Whenever they remembered the times when their relationship went through difficult moments, they both realized that despite all the difficulties, their love withstood everything. And oddly enough, their strange and even slightly risky plan helped them not only survive difficult times, but also find even greater intimacy with each other. Now their love was stronger than ever, and they both knew that they were ready to overcome any difficulties in life together. Subscribe to our channel so that your love doesn't cheat on you, and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think click to the next one. Click to the next one. Click to the next one. Click to the next 